here we are. We're doing behavior four. And I subtitled this Stages of Puppy Development. Every young animal probably goes through these stages, but they're pretty well defined in puppies. And of course, I'm going to give another shout out to Dr. Lucier, who actually lent me many of his PowerPoint slides on puppy development, and I made images of them. And so this entire behavior four thing, the stages rely heavily on Dr. Lucier's PowerPoint slides. Okay, so here's some puppies. And it's very important that we raise the puppies right so they're well adjusted and not mal, M-A-L, adjusted. That would be terrible. I think the Guinness Book of Records for the number of puppies in a litter is about 24. I think it was a Neapolitan Mastiff. I've seen some of those in real life. They're beautiful dogs. I'm not beyond getting one in the future. The Neapolitan Mastiff is beautiful. But a lot of times when you have 24 puppies, sometimes there's a few born dead, unfortunately, and then some die maybe shortly thereafter. 24 is an abnormally high number of puppies. That probably is unrealistic to raise them all. Now here's the stages. Now remember, most of these slides I can attribute to Dr. Lucier, who gave me my formal training in animal behavior. So let's look at this and then we'll go through each stage separately. Of course, you know the fetal stage would be when they're in utero. And the gestation length of puppies is about 63 days so they're in the uterus 63 days and then they're born in the neonatal period here is 0 to 10 days and then all these periods you should realize that they kind of phase in and phase out none of the puppies have read the textbook or any literature so they're not going to like follow these days exactly. So remember that. Neonatal, transitional, socialization, fear period, very important. Don't let your puppies fear something. Juvenile period, adolescent, and then there's some theory about a second fear period. I would like to start with the first period of or stage of puppy development and that's when they're in the fetus which is called the fetal period and maybe you don't realize I'm going to draw like a little uterus here and of course in litter bearing animals the uterus is like two long tubes I've only drawn one of them and then I'm also going to draw a male fetus represented by the M, and then a female fetus represented by the F, and then another male fetus here, because in litter bearing animals there's going to be a lot of neighbors. And you should know that especially in this case where I'm drawing this where there's a female fetus that has two male fetuses by the sides so it would be called a I'm sorry two male female <coughs> excuse me for my rough throat and the kicker is 
when you're a two male female fetus, that means some of this testosterone that has been given off by the male fetuses may affect you. And this has been worked out more with swine. But it's very interesting that the in uterine, the intrauterine environment can affect you for your rest of your life. Very interesting. Now, after the fetal period, we have the neonatal period. Of course, the neonatal, that's like newborn, right? You know that neo means new. It's about zero to ten days of life. But remember, the puppies never read the textbook, so these stages vary a little bit. But you should know that at birth, they can smell, they can taste, and they have this, the sensory ability of touch. But they can't see, nor, nor can they hear. They're not very good at thermal regulation. And they cannot urinate or defecate spontaneously. The dam, right, that's the female parent, stimulates them to defecate and urinate until past this period. Of course, I've got to bring this puppy in, and there's always these sad stories. Here's some hunter found 20 puppies, I can't imagine, 20 puppies abandoned in a field. What a beautiful puppy that is. And then, okay, was it a couple litters? It could be one litter, but most likely, probably more than a couple, uh, more than one litter, probably two litters. But that's really sad. Well, the next stage is called the transitional period, which is approximately 11 to 21 days of life. Remember, the puppies don't read the textbook, so it's around there. They start seeing and hearing, which they didn't before. They start crawling and get motor activities, motor skills. They might have some solid food intake, either from their parents that regurgitate the food, especially the mom. And they may do that. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, their neurological development is very dependent on environmental complexity. Okay, so remember this is the stage after the neonatal. Do they have things that they can react to, smell, see, so forth? Different environmental factors like soft toys, a platform to get up and get down, tunnels to go through, chew toys, and all this is not in the whelping box. If, you, if you're not familiar with that term, whelping means giving birth. So they're gonna not, this should not be in the box where they gave birth. This should be someplace else. Some other things, okay. Well, now they're going to be able to urinate and defecate by themselves. Sometimes prior to this, the mother was eating their feces. That's what this means. Now she's probably going to stop. The puppies are playing together and fighting. And they can learn from positive reinforcement, which is they do something right. They get kind of pleasure reward from that, and it's going to reinforce the behavior. Well, now we need to talk about the socialization period, which is about week three of life to 12, something like that. 
how they socialize to their litter mates and other puppies as well. Okay. And so about three to 12 weeks of life, remember these phases, or I should say stages, phase in and phase out. But this is a great time to introduce these puppies to other dogs, perhaps. Your other dogs or other dogs in the neighborhood or dogs of your friends. They play with the litter mates. This bite inhibition is very important. That means when you chomp down on a litter mate, especially, and the litter mate cries, you learn that you should not have bit down that hard. Okay? And then a social hierarchy, of course, sooner or later develops where somebody tends to be the boss and others tend to be subordinates. Now, you've got to make sure the puppies can leave where they sleep so they can eliminate, especially outside. And you've got to make sure, and this takes a lot of time, you have to take them out a lot. Say, hey, this is where you do your duties and not where you sleep. Okay, and then... Another thing that happens during this stage is habituation to stimuli. It might be noise from the neighbors. It might be cars nearby. It might be a stereo playing. And also, sometimes you advocate audio tapes of thunder, lightning, loud noises, trucks coming by. Introduce it slowly and then build up because then you develop habituation, which is, you defined this earlier, where you don't react to neutral stimuli. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to talk about the socialization period. All right, remember these things phase in phase out. This is where they're really able to learn and they learn from bad experiences. But you have to be careful because a global fear means they might fear a lot of things that they haven't been exposed to. Like a common word is kenalosis is where they're like fearful of almost everything. And of course, Dr. Lucher always said, one of the best things you can do for your puppy is to take it to puppy class. And I will second that emotion, that's for sure. In this socialization period, they become desensitized to certain objects, situations. They should be given a lot of environmental complexity, taken out to puppy parks, as long as there's not like the flu going around, which we had earlier some years, okay? Got to be careful. You always got to temper that. And then sometimes some people think there's a secondary socialization period to humans and other pets. It might be cats. That's in the later portion of this socialization period. Now the next stage of puppy development is the fear period, which is very interesting. It's about between five and 12 weeks of age. But again, remember, these things phase in and phase out. They can learn a fear to something. And it's very important that you be careful about this. Stronger fear reactions and they retain their fear sometimes to an object or a person. Got to be careful about, I've heard of people having puppies that were ruined by 
one exposure to a very traumatic situation. Of course, genetically, puppies are different. And then also, it's sometimes contraindicated to ship a puppy to, like if you're selling a puppy to some place during this fear period. Well, after that fear period, there's a thing called the juvenile period, which is, again, approximately three months of age to puberty, and puberty differs. The smaller dogs experience puberty at an earlier age than, let's say, a bigger dog, like a Great Dane. This juvenile period has, obviously, a lot of growth. They're becoming more independent. And you should have initiated training before this, because this period is a time that you shouldn't initiate training. It should have been before. And then, hence, early training pays off. Okay, well, then we have this adolescent period, which is really where they develop basically maturity. And it can be from puberty to when they're mature relative to the breed, because each breed is a little different. For example, the... Uh, Pyrenees Mountain Dog. Oh my gosh, Monique. I've had one. They're big dogs, but those big dogs take longer to mature than a smaller dog, like a Chihuahua, for example. Now, I should say, after that adolescent period, there is thought to be a second fear period. Again, these things are not set in stone, but it's like a three-week interval when an animal is between four and 11 months of age, which is a lot of time in there. It depends on breed and individual, but the bigger the breed, the later it would be. And they may become fearful of familiar objects. and they can develop a permanent fear. If your dog ever develops a fear of something familiar, for example, the worst thing you can do is punish the dog. So again, here's that summary of the second fear period. There is some duration, let's say two to three weeks, between 4 and 11 months of age. Very dependent on the breed. And you got to be careful. You cannot punish a dog for being fearful during this period. Now, if everything has gone right, <laughs> look at this picture here. These guys are jumping off a plane into the abyss, is what I call it. Obviously some military operation, but oh my gosh, that would not be me. But look what, we're, what our dogs do for us and our nation. Anyway... Dogs can be trained to do a lot of things. Look at this one. Newfoundlands. Here's the worker right down here, lower right. Got the rope in its mouth and is doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dogs. That's amazing. But you can train your dogs to do that. I've seen that. That's amazing. Hey, Newfoundlands, of course I'm biased now, having Newfoundlands. Here's a Newfoundland jumping out of a helicopter, <laughs> going to help rescue somebody that's over here in the water. Look at that. 
That's amazing. Now we need to talk about how to prevent problems in those puppies. And because the puppies, oh my gosh, got to be very careful. So here's a few things. Make sure their environment is such that they really can't do something wrong and they do something right and you reward them. Okay? Management for success and puppy proofing, it's called. <clears throat> Helpful hints. Ignore the behavior when they do something that's really not wrong. That's wrong. And then when they do something right, give them a lot of encouragement and reward them. Be consistent. You know, that's incredibly important. The lure training, of course, is you have treats and you lure them to do, do the right thing. And then you should look up clicker training. But basically, the clicker is a re promise of a reward to come. Or it's like you click and you give a treat. And so the clicker is a promise to reward a treat soon. Then you need to do sometimes what's called bite inhibition. They should learn this from their litter mates, but they may not. And what you do is when the puppy does play with your hand, if it kind of bites down with its teeth, then you immediately quit playing and ignore the puppy. Because then that's telling it, hey, it should not be biting down on your hand. Of course, a lot of people use crates. And then you've got to make sure it's appropriate in size. It shouldn't be too big. I know a couple of the crates I have bought, they have like a divider that makes the cage smaller when the dogs are younger. And then you can move the divider back or remove it totally when the dogs are bigger. Make the crate a good place to be. Throw treats. You can hide treats in there. Feed the animal, feed the dog in this case. Teach it to go into the crate on, on command. Then slowly close the door, give it a treat, and then open it. And then extend the time that the dog is in the crate. And then you can use these little tricks like a peanut butter stuffed Kong and so the animal the dog I should say in this case spends a lot of time trying to get to the peanut butter or other treats that are in the toy <clears throat> okay so house training want to have use of the crate and then you should take the puppy outside after feeding, after it's resting, after it exercises. So it gets used to eliminating outside. And the, the, the trick is to take out frequently. And then when it does go outside, its jobs, urination and defecation, reward it. And you can train the dog, the puppy in this case, to be in the crate or supervised by you in this room and then take it outside. And when it does do its jobs, as we say, then give it a lot of rewards. Okay, another thing about problem prevention, thanks to Dr. Lucher's slides here, we need to train our puppies to be alone. 
And if they are trained to be alone, we have less separation anxiety. We had a behavior lesson that had some of that on there, right? And then it's kind of like, almost like shaping. You start with short absences. Put the puppy, dog in the crate and just be gone for a very short time. And then you can put things in its crate, maybe something that it chews or that it likes to be with. And then here's a nice thing to know. Never get the dog excited when you're leaving. That's this bottom line. Ignore always before leaving. Never say, oh, Brutus, got to go, got to go see you later, whatever. No. You just kind of like almost sneak out and it won't get hyper excited that you're going. Of course, now we're just talking about a multitude of problem prevention situations. The food bowl is interesting, right? I mean, okay, food bowl safety, this is titled. You measure out the food in another bowl and you sit down with the puppy and you empty the food bowl, but then, this is beautiful, add the ration to the food bowl with your hand while the puppy eats. What that tells the puppy is your hand is a favorable environmental factor. It's like adding something wonderful so the puppy will never be intimidated intimidated by your hand or think it's a threatening thing and then here it is toss a treat into the puppy's food bowl whenever you pass your hand represents something positive in this case and you'll never be bitten or growled at and i always usually end with a list of the illustrations used. See you next time.